sun goes down, feelings right. You wake me up when the sun goes down, sleepless nights. You wake me up when the sun goes down. I can't help it, baby, not myself when the sun goes down. I'm a little bit later. Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Bettina Ray. So, I had a baby. I had Luca five days ago now and I'm just taking a moment to film this because I want this record. I want to record how I feel about his birth. I want to record, <laughs> I'm going to get emotional already, how I feel about the fact that he's finally here. Side note, I can't believe he's not actually in this video. I fully anticipated to film today with him on me feeding because that's pretty much all we've been doing for the last five days. Um, my mum's out with the big two, so I've got a few hours to just enjoy our little guy, which is lovely. And he's asleep, which is totally weird because he hasn't been sleeping for long stretches at a time. Although last night we did a whole four hours, which was awesome. So. His birth, I just want to share with you what happened, how incredible and amazing it was. So the story kind of starts the night before or the day before. Um, I was so ready. I was having lots of practice contractions and I had been on and off for the last week or so. I was irritable and just over it. Um, I was butting heads with Eamon, as some of you know, if you follow me on Instagram. And I just, I don't know, I just knew it was so close. So the night before I went into labor, my husband wasn't home from work because he'd had a really big job. So just me and the boys and putting them to bed, I got some clary sage and I got them to rub a little bit on my belly before they went to bed and say to the baby, come on baby, we're ready to meet you. And so I don't know why I did that. It was just, this idea came into my head. I guess I was 100% over being pregnant and clary sage is supposed to kind of help labor move along if it's actually happening. And that's a really special memory now. So I'm really glad that I did that. So I went to bed about 10 o'clock and I was having sort of contractions on and off, but nothing major, still just like, I would call them practice contractions. Like I didn't have to stop. I could just keep doing what I was doing. And I remember holding my belly as I fell asleep and just being like, this is it. And just kind of knowing that something was going to happen and then at 2 30 I woke up with a strong contraction like the contraction woke me and my waters I felt my waters break and I quickly called out to Andrew to grab a towel had Rory beside me got out of bed and went and had a shower put the kettle on and was kind of just like waiting what's going to happen um, Andrew had obviously got up at this time and I said to him who are we going to call because we kind of we didn't have a set plan for what was going to happen with the boys. My mum is an hour and a half away. My labour with Rory from the first contraction was only two hours. So I was a little bit like, I don't know if she's going to make it. So we kind of had a few people that were going to be like the interim. We'd call them if it was depending on what time of day, if they were at work, if they were at home. Um, and they would come and sit with the boys until my mum got there. But because it was the middle of the night, Interestingly, the two people he called <laughs> didn't answer their phone, but I wasn't really stressed because contractions hadn't properly started yet. And so I just said, just ring mum, tell her to come. I know she'll have a bag packed and she'll be in the car straight away because she'll be so excited. So he did that and you know, still I was starting to get some contractions. They were reasonably strong, but nothing regular. So sometimes it'd be 10 minutes and then it'd be five minutes and then I'd have a big break for 20 minutes. Meanwhile, Rory has refused to go back to sleep. I'm in the lounge room because I just felt most comfortable there. And he is on the, I think he was on the couch for a while with the iPad and then Andrew booted him back to our bed with the iPad. And he stayed up from three o'clock. He didn't go back to sleep, which is a pretty good effort. Anyway, so my mum made it and we probably waited half an hour to an hour, I think, after she got to our place and then went to hospital again. My contractions weren't, they weren't full on like I remember last time on our way to hospital being like 
fully focused. I was still able to think and do things and there were still quite significant breaks in between. So we got to the hospital, we went in, um, they put us straight into a room and because I said no to having an internal to check how far dilated I was, they wanted to put the monitors on my belly and they said they needed to get a 20 minute reading of his heartbeat with the contractions to see how strong the contractions were, whether I was in active labor and that would determine what would happen. So I would either go home or I would go to maternity if it wasn't in birthing suite because when you're in birthing suite they openly admitted that you're kind of on the clock and they want to see baby coming within 24 hours so they'll be offering you things to get that moving if you're not in active labor so they were great in that they were wanting to know how far along I was but um, admitting that they don't want you here unless you're unless it's happening because otherwise then they sort of have to offer you things but at the same time I know how fast my labors can go from zero to a baby so I was in the back of my mind thinking I'm not going home like that's not an option um, I didn't really even want to leave the room contractions were coming they were quite strong but still not as regular as they would like unfortunately every time I had a contraction unfortunately for them I wanted to be on hands and knees that's just this instinctual I need to be on hands and knees and so every time I would move they would lose the monitor on his heartbeat and so then they had to start the whole thing all over again. So I was on this silly monitor for probably an hour and a half or more. And then there was a changeover with midwives, which was a really good thing because the next midwife was like, oh, we'll fix this, we'll get this straight away, fixed it up, got me off that thing probably within 20 minutes. And ironically, as soon as they took the monitors off, it was on. It was like one contraction on top of each other. I couldn't catch a break. Um, they were incredibly intense and at that point it was clear I was not going anywhere and I was having a baby very soon. So it was about 7.45 by this time when they'd taken the monitors off and my contractions really amped up. Somewhere around there, I'm a bit foggy on the details of when it kind of all happened, the main midwife on charge came in to kind of, I don't know, check what's going on, what's happening. They've obviously looked at my history and they've seen that I've had a previous third degree tear. So that's probably was the biggest thing on their minds at this point in the fact that things were amping up and going quite fast, wanting to slow things down. Um, I kind of also have a feeling that the fact that I had three losses impacted the way that they were with me because I felt, I almost felt like they were overprotective in a way of some things and really on to wanting to have his heart rate monitored at all times, which I of course appreciated, but in some ways it was a little bit, oh, I don't know, I don't know if intrusive, yeah, no, maybe intrusive is the right word. I felt like get out of my space, I know what I'm doing in a way. Um, but that being said, they were great. Um, and especially when it came to pushing, they were amazing. But I do feel like from my history and what they've seen that they've maybe interacted with me in a way that reflected that if that makes sense. So the main midwife in charge has come in, checked how I was going, could see that I was in very active labor. So around that time, my body started pushing and I think they were a little bit concerned that there could be a possibility that my cervix hadn't fully opened yet because they kept saying to me like, are you, are you really breathing through this? And I'm like, yes, I'm really breathing through this. Like I wasn't pushing before I had the urge to do so. It was literally my body doing it. And they were also a little bit worried about his heart rate. They kept trying to put the Doppler on my belly during contractions and I was like, get it off. It was like, I, don't know, I just couldn't stand being touched in this labor at all. And I found that really annoying. So I kept telling them to get it off and they'd be like, oh yes, okay. Anyway, so they, they suggested that they do an internal, they'd be really quick and they would put the little monitor on his head. And it's funny going into it, it's not something I, probably would have agreed to but at that point I was just like if this means you'll leave me alone and you can have his heartbeat and not we don't have to be worried about him I was like okay go for it so they helped me up onto the bed I'd been on the floor previously on hands and knees she got me to lie on my back and then another contraction hit so I was like nope straight back onto hands and knees um, and then as soon as that one finished I lay on my back and it was like literally two seconds and to be honest at that point the internal was not even an issue. Um, 
previously in my first labor when I'd had it and had it really early on, I found it so confronting and I really feel like it affected how labor progressed because you're kind of like, it just puts you in that fear state. But at this point I was so just, it was happening that it was, yeah, it wasn't really an issue to be honest. So that happened, they could leave me alone with the Doppler now and I got back on hands and knees and kept doing what I was doing. So my body was pretty intensely bearing down. And then the main midwife wants to talk to me about the possibility of an episiotomy if it looks like I'm going to tear. And I guess this is where it comes in that having your own private midwife would have been a much better idea because this is not the time to have this conversation. <laughs> And unfortunately, when you go through the public system, you don't get that chance to talk to just one midwife. And so this is the first time she'd met me. She hadn't spoken to me about this before. So of course she needed to have this conversation. She needed to ask for my permission, but I just, I was not in the headspace. I didn't want to be pulled out of the zone I was in to have to have that conversation. So when she was saying, talking about it and saying this is a possibility and I said I'd rather not and she sort of started going into the reasons why episiotomy is better than a third degree a second third degree tear um, and in the end I said yes all right like just like shut up and go away and she said no I actually need your consent which obviously they do and I said yes you've got it and at that point Andrew said something to her about we'd obviously um, rather not see if we can try to not have the tear at all and yeah, I, I remember in my zoned out place being really grateful that he was having that conversation because I was just like, don't talk to me. Like, I, it's, I felt a lot of the things that happened during this labor pulled me out of that space that I wanted to be in. Um, and that's the exact opposite of what you wanted to be. So I was more in my head than I probably needed and wanted to be um, during Rory's birth I was really just in my body and while later on during pushing stage it was really helpful to be in my head a little bit because I could listen to her cues to slow it down in those early stages having to have those conversations really just ticked me off to be honest so from there they started to be able to see his head and the first midwife was just doing a warm compress on my perineum to protect that part and to slowly ease the head out and then the main midwife was giving me really great direction. So as much as she annoyed me earlier on, I can't fault her during this part. She was really great. And it was, I, I feel really proud of how controlled this part of his birth was because it was like, okay, we've got the top of his head, pant, breathe. Um, okay, that's the forehead, take a breath, wait. All right, next contraction, little push for the nose. And it was, it was so controlled and so, like I just felt like, I don't know, I was really calm about it. It was, I mean, it was painful, I guess, but it was not even something I was thinking about. It was just like, okay, I've got to do this really slowly to get him out without injuring myself too much. And so, yeah, we went forehead, nose, okay, little one, chin, okay, you've got the head. And then at that point, I just moved my leg up a little bit and sort of sat back. So I was sort of on one knee and one foot and his shoulders were born and they passed him through onto my chest and I lay down quite awkwardly <laughs> um, on the bed and he was here. And that, at that point was all that mattered. In the night you wake me up when the sun goes down. Feelings right you wake me up when the sun goes down. Sleepless nights you Wake me up when the sun goes down. And at that point I thought, like when I'd imagined birth, I'd have like this big emotional, I don't know, release, but I didn't. It felt so surreal. It was like, yeah, I've, I've definitely had those moments since. Like I feel like I'm welling up now. But at the time I was, I think just, it was just so surreal that he was finally here and he was in my arms and yeah, I didn't have that. I was just in awe that he was there. So he wasn't very happy when he was born. He was quite um, whingy, which I've never had a baby just literally come out and start whinging at me. And he was quite spewy as well. They said that because it was such a fast birth, so really it was only like a little over an hour from active to him being born. 
that they didn't give time to push all the gunk out of him. So he was spewing up am amniotic fluid for the first 24 hours or so. And yeah, so he whinged, he wasn't really interested in feeding. So we waited till the cord stopped pulsing and then Andrew cut it and we delivered the placenta. And so from there, they just did their check to see if I had any injuries. Unfortunately, I did end up with a second degree tear, which I don't want to say just, because if that's all you've had, <laughs> a second degree tear is still significant. But for me, after having a third degree and episiotomy first time round, this felt like a win. And it was his shoulders in the end that caused the tear. His head came out without any injuries. And then those big shoulders that came out and followed. But to be honest, Recovery has been amazing this time. I think by the third time round, I'm just, I know how to look after myself a lot better. So that is the story of Luca's birth. It was amazing, incredibly fast and intense. I just feel so emotional even just thinking about it. But yeah, overall, I just feel really happy with how it all went and that he is finally here and safely in our arms. And let the fun of life with three and life with a newborn begin. <laughs> I'll see you in the next video. In the night, Bye. you wake me up when the sun goes down. Feelings right, you wake me up when the sun goes down. Sleepless nights, you wake me up when the sun goes down. I can't help it, baby, not myself when the sun goes down.